So after the delivery, I stayed in the hospital for a whole week. So I was in the hospital from January 24th to January 31st. That's when I was discharged. It, it was so long because they were still trying to get my blood pressure under control. It still was like go up, come down, go up, come down. And they did put me on blood pressure medicine, which I went home with that. And I took that for six weeks as well. So delivery did cure my preeclampsia, but I still had some issues with it. So yeah, so I did have to do those two things after the delivery. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hashima, and thank you so much for joining me today. So if you haven't seen my two previous videos, I'll link them below, you can check them out. But today my video is gonna be about my C-section recovery and postpartum after my C-section. So the first thing that they had me do is be on a liquid diet. I was on a liquid diet, I think for about a whole 24 hours, which really sucked because first I hadn't eaten that much before I started the labor and delivery process. And then I had the C-section and then I had the magnesium for 24 hours after birth. So I hadn't eaten in a really long time. And the first things I was able to eat after the delivery was just liquid. So I was able to eat jello, coffee, tea, <laughs> I think applesauce and like really light things, soup, pudding, that's all I was allowed to eat for about 24 hours after the birth. And then after that, I was slowly was allowed to eat regular foods. I also had a, my mom told me it's a incentive spreadometer. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right, but basically it was this thing that you breathe into. So it kind of looked like a portable breathing tube and they had you breathe into that like every hour or so to make sure that your lungs didn't fill up with fluid to get pneumonia because a c-section is major abdominal surgery and it cut through about seven layers of skin and muscle to get to the uterus to get to the baby so it's a super intensive surgery and they have to take everything out put everything back in to get the baby so afterwards the recovery is a long process so that's one of the things that helped to kind of get the insides regulating again and get everything back to normal so i remember having to breathe into that and it was really hard like you wouldn't think about it like certain things you take for granted but it was hard to breathe into it up to the point that they wanted you to breathe into and it was marked on there but yeah that's something i had to do and i think i had to do that for well the whole rest of my hospital stay and i took that home as well I and mean, i can insert a picture of it what i'm talking about because <laughs> i'm not even sure if anyone has seen something like that but that was something that they offered you after you had your C-section in recovery at mother baby. So because I was bed bound for my whole labor and delivery process in the C-section, I had a catheter. So when they took that out, then you have to use the bathroom, you know, pee normally. But that was really hard too. It took me about probably like 10 minutes just because everything is like swollen down there. And it's, it's even worse after a vaginal birth. Like it's just, things are not moving regularly like they normally would so that's one of the things that they want to make sure that you can do before you leave the hospital and walking and standing as well which is hard to do after a c-section so i remember they try to get you up and moving pretty fast after your delivery and everything hurts like it all hurts because you use your core for so many things that you don't even realize that you use it for so standing up hurt getting into the bed hurt getting out of the bed hurt sitting down hurt little things like laughing coughing sneezing and if you were to get gas build up that really hurt to burp so they recommend or they try to encourage you to use a pillow like if you have to sneeze or cough kind of like hold a pillow to your incision and do it that way because little things like that hurt twisting and moving they did put me on a postpartum girdle and it kind of looked like a waist trainer they had that on me right after the c-section so they put that on right after they had sewed me up and i had that for the whole rest of my hospital stay and then i bought one myself off of amazon and i used that probably for at least the first six to eight weeks i wore that and it kind of helped to just you know tighten everything back up together and it also gave you like some more core support so that moving and everything like that didn't hurt too much so your first shower post birth is like <laughs> the best shower you will ever take in your life after birth you just feel like grimy you feel like like not yourself and it's even worse after a vaginal birth but i remember from my first shower with the c-section so you don't want to scrub that area you kind of just want to soap up as you normally would but when it comes to your c-section scar you just want to let the soap run down over the scar you don't really want to like go at it like no you hurt yourself especially if it's a freshly new incision so you want to let the soap run down it and then when you're drying you just want to pat it dry with a towel or like a dry rag 
to keep that area dry, but you definitely don't want to scrub it as if you would and you had no decision there. You want to be gentle with the scar. So as I said, I was put on the labetalol for my blood pressure and I was on that for about six to eight weeks postpartum just to make sure that my blood pressure was staying stabilized. I had a blood pressure check one week after I left the hospital. So this is about two weeks postpartum and it was kind of a little elevated, but not like super bad. And I was on a blood pressure medicine at the time. I believe I took it in the morning and at nighttime. And then once I had my official eight week OBGYN appointment, then they said that I didn't need to take it anymore. But it was called the beta law and it's completely safe for breastfeeding. So I had to take that two months postpartum because my preeclampsia was just, it, it was really bad. And that was like an extra precaution to make sure that everything was okay as far as my blood pressure. So of course, after a C-section, you cannot drive or operate a vehicle or machinery for about eight weeks. Uh, I probably didn't wait that long, honestly. I, at first I had family members taking me back and forth to the hospital, but they weren't all on maternity leave like I was. So I did have to drive. I probably started driving six weeks postpartum, if I'm honest. And I have a stick shift too. So driving was, yeah, that was a little bit hard, but I did it. <laughs> and I, you know, I wore my girdle and I just drove as slow as I, as I could. But yeah, you're not supposed to drive. I was given Tylenol 3 in the hospital for pain, and that's what I took in the hospital, and it prescribed me with Percocet. Now, I didn't take Percocet because my mom had a bad experience with it, and it's not something that I wanted to chance myself. And also, you can't drive if you're on Percocet because that's a heavy narcotic. So I didn't want to chance that. My pain wasn't really that bad. Like after I went home one week after being in the hospital, I only took Advil and Tylenol. I think I alternated those two for pain. Which brings me to my next point is don't let the pain get on top of you. And what I mean by that is take your pain medicine regularly. Just take your pain medicine regularly. So about every three hours you want to be taking whatever pain medicine you're using because it's worse if you don't take it. So like you say you're feeling good one day and you're like, oh, I'm not going to take it this morning. I'm not going to take it this afternoon. You can go to sleep and wake up in tremendous pain. You do not want to do that. Take your pain medicine for every three hours as long as you feel like you need it. And even if you feel like you don't need it, take it for like a two extra days and then stop taking it because once the pain hits you, it's kind of hard to backtrack and then try to make up for it. So definitely stay on top of your pain medicine, whatever it is that you're using, make sure you're taking it regularly. So another tip that I would like to share is take your Coley's or take your stool softener, whatever that is for you. I had Coley's in the hospital and that worked fine. My first bowel movement, they do wanna make sure that you have a bowel movement. It's not a requirement anymore to leave the hospital, but they will ask you about it. Um, and of course it can be nerve wracking because your intestines and everything, everything is just like trying to play catch up after a C-section. So everything's moving sluggish. And of course, pregnancy, you already have com some constipation with that as well, or you may be experiencing hemorrhoids. So it could be really nerve wracking to have that first bowel movement. But if you stay on top of taking your stool softener, and you're trying to make sure that you're eating um, fatty foods and fiber rich foods and drinking your water, you will be okay. But stay on top of it. I took, I believe I took Senecot coming out of the hospital just because I wanted to make sure that whatever I was taking was also safe for breastfeeding. Senecot is a more natural kind of stool softener. So that's what I use. And I used that probably for about until six months postpartum because I didn't have any issues at first, but I did get constipation probably like two months postpartum and it just came out of nowhere. Like things were going fine and all of a sudden I was dealing with or struggling with constipation. So I, that's when I picked up the Senecot. So I would just say my best advice is to take it for like the first six months or so while your body is still getting back to um, functioning in its normal capacity. So one thing about C-sections, which I don't know why I didn't think of it, is that you still will bleed vaginally postpartum. For some reason I didn't, I don't know, I just, I never thought about it. So to still be bleeding vaginally, I was like, that's weird because I thought only that happened with vaginal births, but you still bleed. And that's because where your placenta detached from the uterus is an open wound. And that's another reason why the doctor said to refrain from sex for six to eight weeks because that wound is open. And so you can run the risk of having an infection. So you will still bleed vaginally for some women. 
it's less and for some it's more. For me, it was less than my vaginal births, I would say. I probably only bled about four weeks. And it was heavy like the first two weeks or so. And then it kind of was just like light bleeding for the rest of the time. So you still will bleed vaginally. So make sure you invest in some Depends or the really big pads, whatever you have to use for your postpartum bleeding. Which leads me to my next point, which is don't lift anything heavier than your baby. So for me, my baby was still at the hospital and she was my first child. So coming home, I didn't really have any responsibilities other than just resting, which will help your incision to heal faster. But if you have other children, or of course, you know, if your baby comes home with you, that's the heaviest thing that you wanna be lifting. I know it's hard, especially if you have other children, older children, but you wanna remember that rest and just relaxing and staying still, well not staying still, but resting will help to help your body to heal faster. You don't wanna run the risk of opening your incision either on the outside or an inside, because of course that will have to be repaired and restitched, and then you'll still have to deal with a longer recovery. So try to really make sure that you're minimizing, not doing things that don't need to be done. So just tending to your baby, taking care of your baby and taking care of yourself. Leave the chores for later, leave the dishes for later, leave the cooking for someone else to do or order out or you know, whatever it is that you have to do to minimize you doing too much, putting too much stress on your body and making your healing process last even longer than it needs to be. So it took me about six months before I began to feel normal. And I'm saying began to feel normal um because the c-section is just a lot like it's really a lot i don't know if it's that way for every woman if, if you have a scheduled c-section maybe the recovery is a little bit easier for you but because it was an emergency c-section and i had other issues that i was dealing with it took a really long time before i felt like okay i kind of know my body again so yeah just don't expect like a super fast recovery uh, that hasn't been my experience that may be yours but C-section recovery is long, you know, because it is major abdominal surgery, so you have to keep that in mind. A lot of things are not going to be normal physically with your body, and it takes a while to heal from that surgery. So just give it time. You will feel normal again, <laughs> but it does take a while. So my incision, I remember it was like sore. It was numb. So it would get itchy, and I would go to scratch it and couldn't feel myself scratching it. Like it's the weirdest sensation ever. And it kind of has sensation now, like it has more sensation than it did then. But it took about probably a year at least before I could like feel it or touch the area and feel myself touching the area. Oh, so it is one of those things that you just have to, that comes with having a C-section. The area may be numb for a while and that is completely normal, I promise you. So I went back to work six months postpartum and I was working overnight at the time. So I didn't really have to worry about pumping overnight because I was trying to night wean my daughter anyway, which she did, you know, amazingly. She did fine with that. But if you are going back during the daytime when you're working daytime hours, you want to make sure that you're pumping like every three hours or so. It is a law. It is a requirement by law that if you're a pumping mother to have those pumping breaks some companies you have to force the issue i know it's not right it's not fair but if you're trying to still breastfeed you need to get those pumping sessions in if you're working an eight hour shift i would say at least two times to keep up your milk supply so for me that really wasn't an issue i could have pumped um they gave me you know space and opportunity to pump but i didn't need to because i was working overnight and she wasn't eating at night anyway so that worked out for me and I just want to say, as far as having a C-section, you want to call the doctor if you're experiencing any swelling, if you have any redness, if your incision is hot to the touch, or if there's any pus coming out of it. Because those are signs that you could have an infection or that your C-section scar is opening. Sometimes it can open on the inside and be closed on the outside, or it could be vice versa. So if you see any of those signs, definitely get in contact with your OBGYN. And if you have a fever, 104 or above you want to get in contact with someone because all of those signs are not good that's all i have today for my c-section recovery if you've had a c-section maybe leave a comment below of something that happened to you or if any of these things happen to you but recovery from a c-section remember it is major abdominal surgery so you just really want to be gentle with yourself during that time and it may take you a long time to feel normal i know it did for me but thank you so much for watching today and remember to let your story be your power and i'll see you in my next video bye